please like my videos please subscribe to my channel and please press the bell icon so that you get to know when my latest video has come and to learn more and to find a video relevant to you please do check out my videos list hello namaskar and hello to all my friends from your friend astrology and guide irfan once more with you from my very own channel astro assurance this question i have answered earlier also but this has been asked again about giving the importance of the significance of specific signs becoming the moon trigon sign which means why is libra the moon trigon sign of venus rather than taurus why is sagittarius the moon trigon sign of jupiter rather than pisces why is aries the moon trigon sign of mars rather than scorpio and why is virgo the moon trigon sign of mercury rather than gemini and why is aquarius the moon trigon sign of saturn rather than capricorn now we need to delve deeper into this this can get a little complex also however i'll try and keep it as simple as possible so for those people who are the uh, who are newcomers or the uninitiated and i would want you to do some more research on it and so that i'll do a follow up video talking about the more complex energies of the moon trigon signs but let me add uh, that this particular video i'll try and keep it very very simple so that it's easy for everybody to understand so firstly what is the what are the what are the total number of planets that we have or the planetary entities we have seven and the other two are nodes so we need to remember the number seven is critical to the energies of the zodiac to the energies of the horoscope and let's see whether through the moon trigon sign can we reach the number seven we know that there are seven moon trigon signs one one each for moon and sun they anyways rule only one sign each and one one for the other five planetary entities now if you see the significant or the significance of the signs is that the dharma houses all the three dharma houses are moon trigon signs so aries the first dharma house in the kalpurush kundli is a moon trigon sign the fifth house represented by leo and a dharma bhav and a fire house is a moon trigon sign and then the ninth sign represented by sagittarius is a dharma sign also a fire sign and so these three that means all the dharma bhavas are moon trigon signs then the two kama signs are moon trigon signs what are the two kama signs one is libra the seventh house energies and the other is aquarius which is the 11th house energies the both of these two are kama signs then there is only one moon trigon sign which is the artha bhava or artha sign which is the sign of virgo which is a represented by the 6th house at the 6th house energies and there is only one sign which has the moksha energies and is a moon trigon sign which is the cancer sign represented by the 4th house so if you see what is being told to us by the zodiac the zodiac is telling us that the dharma your duty our responsibilities are most important for our lives and that's why all the three fire signs dharma bhavas are moon trigon signs then if you go deeper into it you will see that what is the most important person for our, us in our lives that is us without us there is no existence everything revolves around us so the first house aries energies is a dharma bhava as well as represents us which means our dharma is not only to others but our dharma is only also to us and the biggest and the most important responsibility to us the biggest dharma that we have to us to do is is to look for moksha for ourselves to look for salvation for us and that salvation comes only from service to others and not to self and so if you look at the next four moon trigon signs one after the other second and the third sign which is taurus and gemini are not moon trigon signs which is an interesting thing that venus and gemini and mercury two moon signs are not moon trigon signs however then virgo and libra represented by mercury first and venus later are both moon trigon signs so we'll come to it in a minute so the fourth fifth sixth and seventh sign all four of them are moon trigon signs one after the other what is the significance of this 
So the first house, the AV sign energies, ourselves is a Mulatrikona sign and our dharma is to us. The fourth sign or the fourth house represents mother and also represents the domestic life and represents all our material possessions, tangible material possessions. And the fourth house is also Moksha Bhava. What is the, the most important house of gains? in the horoscope the ninth house is the most auspicious and the biggest house of gains what is the ninth house to the fourth house the ninth house to the fourth house is the twelfth house which is again a moksha bhava which means in doing service to mother and living the domestic life through doing for a family and serving the mother you get moksha and that's why in Muslims, we say that heaven lies below the feet of the mother. So, fourth house, a moksha bhav represented by mother, is the only moksha sign which is also motrikona sign. So, keep this in mind. Then, so the next relationship which is very important to us after ourselves is the mother who gives birth to us. Then, the fifth house or the Leo energies. Now, the Leo energies has both. Fifth house energies which represent children which are the next most important relationship for us and it also has sun energies which is which represents father and so the fifth house energies and the fifth sign energies are very very important because we our duty is not only to father and mother but also to our children because of we bringing them into the world so it's our responsibility to take care of them and leave a legacy behind leave good citizens behind so if you see the most important responsibility if you can see is to ourselves then to father and mother and to children and then to others which is the next most important relationship for us father mother and children the spouse which is represented by the seventh house energy which is libra and spouse and partners and anybody and everybody who we get in touch with on a day-to-day -day basis but definitely a married partner who is also the better half as we like to call it and so the relationship is also very very important and that's that's why it also has the more trikona sign energy we cannot ignore the spouse and still live a good life a happy life a prosperous life a giving life and after that is the ninth house energies. What are the ninth house energies? The ninth house energies constitute both father, the ninth house is, is represent the father and our gurus, our higher learning also. The learning that we not only get through our educational institutes of higher degrees, but also higher learning through experiences. So after living a life and through those experiences, through those incidents, through the situations, what experiences we gain, what high learning we gain is the ninth house energies and the house of the sign of the energies of gurus and the energies of father. So father is represented both by son, the fifth house energies and the ninth house which is also ruled by Jupiter, the guru. And so the ninth house energies because of the relationship and gurus being very very important, dharma being very very important, religion being very very important. So Sagittarius is, is also Murtrikona sign and a Dharma Bhava. After that, the last Murtrikona sign is Aquarius, which has the 11th house energies. And 11th house energies is everybody, the entire society, the whole world. And it is said that the entire universe is, 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 is one humanity. And so if the entire universe is one humanity, the entire society is also a duty, is also a responsibility and it is for us to do for others. And that is one of the most important and one of the most auspicious houses also to do for others and to leave a legacy behind. And larger societal connections doing for masses is represented by the Aquarius signs and so it is another Moltrikona sign and one of the very very karmic Moltrikona signs represented by Saturn. So when we go into the second video which I will do later, once we are able to digest the first one, we will talk more deeper why some of the energies and why each of the signs is a Mutrikona sign, what is the deeper manifestation of this. And in that you will see that Aquarius stands out above everybody else. So these are the uh, seven Mutrikona signs, each of them has a lot of importance of its own, represented by critical relationships. Did I miss an important Mulatrikona sign? Yes. 
I did not refer to the sixth sign, the Virgo sign energy, which doesn't represent any relationship or critical relationship. Then why is it a Mulatrikona sign? And it is a standout sign amongst the Mulatrikona sign because here the planet not only rules that Mulatrikona sign but also gets exalted in that. The sixth house is the house of service. It is also the house of a karma, pending karma, Bhrigu Bhav also that it is called. It is a balancing between the Prarabdha karma of the ninth house and the Sanchita karma of the fifth house also. And so without service to others, the right house, the house right opposite the sixth house is the twelfth house, which is the Moksha Bhava. Without doing service, you will not get Moksha. The balancer of service is Moksha. And so it is a critical, very, very important uh, house. And it is the only Artha Bhava <coughs> which is also Mutrikona sign. Now, why is it only one Artha Bhava is a Mutrikona sign and two Kama Bhavas are a Mutrikona sign? Because the seventh house, Libra energies, and the eleventh house, another Kama Bhava, seventh and eleventh house are Kama Bhavas. Both of them have Libra and the Aquarius energies, and both represent others, everybody else, society or partners, and who we meet on a day to day basis. So, why are these houses or signs related to desires? Because a desire should not be for self, a desire should be for others. In a relationship, the topmost desire should be keep, to keep the spouse happy, to keep the partner happy. If a partner is happy, to a large extent, partner will also ensure that we will be happy to a large extent it doesn't happen with everybody uh, but to a large extent if our partner is happy then to a large extent we can also be happy because the spouse will definitely reciprocate at least a good spouse will definitely reciprocate and maybe uh, maybe more but it is not only about spouse the seventh house is also all those who will meet on a day-to-day -day basis the difference between the seventh house and the eleventh house is seventh house is all about all those people who you meet with or interact with on a day-to-day -day basis where is the eleventh house is everybody else whether you have met them you know them you don't know them you will never meet in your life but you are doing going to do something for society which will help all the others it is like you um, you know putting a bench in the garden for people to sit you don't know who will sit there who will not sit there you know who will enjoy that you know bench or not you are planting a tree you don't know how many people will get the shade out of it how many people will use the oxygen which will come out of the tree and this will be endlessly so the 11th house is for the masses everybody else who you may never know may never meet but the 7th house is all about all those who you meet on a day to day basis you interact with on a day to day basis and get connected somehow or the other on a day to day basis and both the houses of others but they also karma bhava which means your desire should be for others your desire should not be for self your desire should be for others and so these are critical uh, houses and they are critical signs represented by Libra energies and the Aquarius energies. So when you look at all the Multrikona signs and if you add the numbers, the first Multrikona sign Aries represented by the number 1, the next Multrikona sign Cancer represented by the number 4, the next one after that Leo represented by the number 5, then Virgo represented by the number 6, then Libra represented by the number 7. Then Sagittarius represented by the number 9 and Aquarius represented by the number 11. If you add all of these numbers, you get the number 43. 43 in numerology is a very powerful number, a strong number of perseverance, of inner strength, of hope and of contribution and for discipline. And it is also a very angelic number which, is, which means angels will also look over you. But when you re reduce 4 and 3 to a single digit, what do you get? You get the number 7. And so the 7th house is the house opposite to the Lagna. And that's why it's a critical house, which means all the others who you meet and who you are going to meet on a day to day basis. But there is a bigger, larger significance of the Libra energies. What is Libra? Libra is a Kama Bhava, definitely. But Libra also represents all other people but it also represents balance libra the symbol of libra is balance so balance between what your desires are and doing for others and doing for everybody else that means you need to keep a balance between your own desires the kama bhava that you have of the seventh house 
but it should also be for others so the balance is very very important and this is directly opposite the lagna which means it complements the lagna it complements the energies of the lagna so the number seven is very very important and the number seven is very very important in every religion in the bible for example the god created the world or the universe in six days and on the seventh day he he rested if you look from an islamic point of view during the hajj muslims go around the kaaba or circle ambulate the kaaba seven times between the safa and marwa they do a sahi or walking or walking fast between these two safa and marwa two small hills seven times and there are seven heavens according according to islamic uh, theology and there are seven planets in the zodiac and the number seven if you look at in in numbers from one to ten because after 10 the numbers repeat 1 and 1 1 2 1 3 they all are repeated but among the single numbers 7 is the biggest prime number and so the 7 number is very very important 7 continents 7 uh, seas 7 oceans i can go on and on about the number 7 the 7 number is also one of the most uh, liked number um, you know universally uh, most of the people when they ask what is the number you like uh, they like the number seven and favorite one of my favorite numbers is also uh, seven so uh, the number seven is very very important the nux the energy of all the signs coming together is very very important the mudrikona sign energies all come together and give the number seven which means a balance between your desires and what should you desire your desire should be for others and for dharma which is for moksha so when you look at the balance of when you look at this um, at, at a deeper level or level one of more trikona sign energies you, f you will find that dharma or duty to most important relations and manifestations of those is topmost at a higher level duty to these relationships manifestation of these relationships is very very important guru is important father is important mother is important children are important you are important spouse is important and society in general is important and your job and your dharma is to do for all of these for uh, for all of these relations for all the, these entities and hence the first three the all the three fire signs are mool trikona signs and all the three dharma bhavas are mool trikona signs so at the essence dharma doing your duty which is also represented by the saturn energies is the most important um, energy in all the mool trikona signs so at a level one these are the uh, you know i don't know whether you can call them secrets but the manifestation the denotation and the representation of the mool trikona signs if you also want to contribute what you understand your research or what you read about the mool trikona sign energies apart from what my learning is from my understanding and from my research and from my gurus please go ahead and put in the comment section so that it is um, shared with everybody else so that they, we get more learning a deeper meaning from all our contribution so friends uh, now that we have understood what the mool trikona sign energies represent look deep down into your life and see whether you are truly representing and living that kind of um, life which is re which requires you to do duty add a deeper meaning to all these mool trikona sign energies and whether you are true to those duties or not so like this video share this video and if you're looking for a personal consultation for me please reach out to me the links given below until some other time with some other video this is your friend astrologer and guide is signing off